I'm Jack, the Rambling Raconteur. Welcome back. Um, I'm doing the We Ain't Getting Any any Younger tag uh, from the Codex Cantina. It's a happy belated birthday, of course, to Crypto, who's a ripe 40. Uh, I'm still 33. I'll have my birthday in May. And I thought about just waiting until then, but uh, everybody's having so much fun with this. It was, uh, it was too fun to stay out of. So, uh, first prompt. While it's proven too many birthdays can kill you, the amount of cake we can eat is still under debate. Name the most recent book you read that gave you a sugar uh, slash book high. Um, well, I like to eat cake. Part of the way I uh, discipline myself is if, if I go running or exercise or do play soccer or hike or something, uh, then I allow myself to have dessert. So, <laughs> uh, but in terms of books, the most recent one was uh, GBH by Ted Lewis. I read this in March. Um, uh, I just tore into it. It's a strange, gritty uh, British crime novel set in the 1980s. Alternates between a, uh, a, a gangster whose empire is slipping away from him and the interactions he has with his wife, which are really, really weird and strange. Like she's uh, into the scene just as much as he is. And his reflections. Um, couple of months down the road where he's like hiding out in this small bungalow on the beach uh, in an out of season seaside town and it, it was just it was haunting it was fascinating it was dark and grimy and just a, a fantastic read I, I enjoyed every moment of it prompt two sometimes we get older and wider instead of older and wiser name the longest book you read uh let me throb victor hugo 1,400 and something pages, 1,432 pages. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, prompt three, the best part about pictures is that they're always a younger version of you. Name a book that you enjoyed more the first time than the second. Uh, there's two here, and they kind of go together. I read both of these around the age of 19, maybe 18 actually. I read these around the age of 18 uh, and thought like, whoa, like, this is what it means. Like this is, this is what it's about. And I reread both in my latter 20s and went, what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> so the first is uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway about the Spanish Civil War. Um, if you like this book, I highly recommend you check out a book called Uncertain Glory by Juan Sales. His first name is spelled Joan, but I think in Catalan it's Juan. It was published by NYRB Classics, and it is set in that same Spanish Civil War. It is a fantastic read, and much less uh, chauvinistic and narcissistic. The other is F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. Um, of course, I think... I had a huge number of friends who loved this in college. I was among that number, but but more and more, I think there's just there's less to it. The the, the the characters aren't characters I would ever want to spend time with in real life. So there's that. Uh, four. As you get older, you must learn to never skip a bathroom break before you take a car ride. That's especially true if you're doing like long car rides. And I have a daughter who is potty trained but um, she's four, and so we're trying to coach that into her. <laughs> uh, name a book you read in very few sittings. Have you ever walked to the bathroom while holding a book and fumbled the door? I've never done that, although I definitely have like been reading and like walked into things and fallen over. But the, the book books that come to mind are, when I was in eighth grade, this was like 1999, 2000, I think it was 2000 because Harry Potter 4, The Goblet of Fire, was about to come out. And my younger brother loved the books. He, he had read the first three and he would just talk about them all the time. So one weekend I picked up, I couldn't, I couldn't find the first book, I picked up The Chamber of Secrets, the second book, and read it like through that night. Um, I think it's the shortest of the Harry Potter books. And I, I thought it was, it, was, it was interesting, it was, it was fun. And so several years later, uh, the Half-Blood Prince came out and uh, someone picked up a, someone from our family went and picked up a copy and I read it through in like one night. Um, I think I put on some like music and just kind of had that going in the background while I sat and read through 
the entire book and enjoyed both. Enjoyed both. Uh, you know, that was, I was in middle school when I read Chamber of Secrets and then I read Goblet of Fire. I think it came out like the summer before my freshman year of high school. And so Half-Blood Prince, I think, was the summer after my freshman year of college. And by that point, I kind of was like, okay, there's more to reading than Harry Potter, but I've enjoyed the series. I'm going to keep reading it. So I enjoyed both. Uh, prompt five, don't let old age get you down because it's harder to get back up these days. Name a book you had to put down and why. Now, I'm just going to say one thing about being harder to get up. I knew I was ready to become a father when my wife, who was, I was... 29 at the time. My wife was pregnant and we'd gotten back from a trip over the Christmas break and she was, uh, we, we had, one of us had set the suitcase down at the foot of our bed and she got up in the middle of the night to walk over to go to the bathroom and stumbled into the suitcase and I, I was like totally asleep but I heard it and I was sleeping and I threw myself off the bed like a Spider-Man type move, and managed to land in a crouch right next to where she was, she hadn't fallen, but she kind of like, like ran into the suitcase and then like stood there, and then kind of like bent over to feel it, and then kind of like went down to one knee, but I like threw myself off the bed to get there. So my Spider-Man reflexes are still doing okay. I'll just, I'll have you know that. Um, it's harder to get back up these days. And she was totally fine, as was our daughter. Name a book that you had to put down and why. I thought of a couple. I'm just going to go with this one. This is The Octopus by Frank Norris. This is set um, based on an actual dispute between the Southern Pacific Railroad uh, and wheat farmers in 1880 in California, where the railroad had agreed to like lease every other acre lot to farmers, um, and then the farmers could purchase the alternating lots with the idea that they could buy the lots cheap, they would invest in them, the railroad would then sell them those lots they had leased for a very low price. Well, after they had done all the development, the railroad came back and said, no, you're going to buy them at the new market price and you know, profiteering. So there's just a couple of things with the book. One is there's, there's a character, there's a banker who is like, uh, it, it is Jewish and it's just glaring anti-Semitism. It's like freakish and unpleasant. Another is that some of the writing is absolutely marvelous. Like there's a passage about the, the one character's sheep like get, get away and kind of go onto the railroad tracks and a train comes by and just plows through and kills a lot of the sheep and it's horrifying, but the writing is absolutely incredible. But then there are passages that are the most boring things on the planet. There's passages about like barn raising parties or, or parties in barns that should be energetic and vital and interesting. And they're everything but that. And there's that weird thing of naming characters by their first and last names. Magnus Derrick and Annixter and just all these things. And it's just nonsensically boring. So. I've never finished it. I read McTeague. I thought it was interesting. I thought there are some really wonderful pages in this book, but it's not one I've, I've really pursued. Prompt six. Age isn't how long you've been alive. It's how many lives you've lived. What book genres have you been wanting to try outside of your comfort zone? Not really outside of my comfort zone because I enjoy history, but one I've started to be more interested in reading would be like memoirs or diaries. So I've got the diary of Samuel Pepys. And then I've got the Library of America Diaries of John Quincy Adams volumes, and I'm planning to start dipping into those types of books fairly soon. Uh, prompt seven. Life gets worse the older you get. Not in my book. Uh, luckily, you don't have much time left. Oh, I do. I always joke that I plan to live to be 200, and my students say, that's not possible. I said, well, are you going to be around to prove me wrong? So... <laughs> Uh, name a book that slowly turned sour for you, but you finished anyways. Were you glad you stuck it out? Mine is a book called The Terror by David Andress. It's a history of the French Revolution, which seems like, again, a very wild and interesting and just all over the place, energetic time. And it was astonishingly boring, um, which I feel bad. You know, I've never tried to write a history of the French Revolution or a history of anything. 
and I don't know that I would be very competent at it at all. I just was astonished by how dry and tedious the entire book seemed when there was so much going on and it was the manner in which it was communicated and told just couldn't grab me. And I was fascinated by all of the characters, um, I, you know, the personages, and I really thought it was fascinating, but I, I couldn't, like, I did finish it. Um, in terms of fiction, it's a book called The Trouble with the Harry Kibera Affair. I can't even tell you who wrote it. It was so bad. Um, it was a mystery that was mysteriously printed. That's all I'll say. Uh, prompt A. Peer pressure decreases as you get older. Where did all your friends go? They're on booktube now, apparently. <laughs> Name a book that you uh, checked out because of peer pressure. Were you happy to have tried it? I've got a couple. Uh, one is, of course... The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, one of my closest friends in elementary school, who we, we grew up together, we went to church together, we read together, um, we you know imagined together. He was fascinated by this book and kept talking about it. And so I ended up picking it up and reading it. And I actually still prefer The Hobbit to the Lord of the Rings series, in part because of how fun and interesting it was to read this book and talk about it with my friend at lunch or before or after school in grade school um, and just it, it was just so exciting uh, another one is my wife picked up this biography of Jonathan Swift by Leo Damrosch when it came out uh, right or I think it was the year we got married it, it was either the year we got married or it was the year we got engaged I believe it was the year we got married so it was our first sort of like Christmas as a couple as a married couple and she picked this up, and I had always enjoyed Jonathan Swift. I thought he was really funny. But after reading this biography, I went and um, reread pretty much all of Swift's works and appreciated them even more. I, I still think he's just he's absolutely caustic uh, in terms of his wit, but he's an absolute delight. And then she recently picked up uh, on a trip um, in January, I think January, uh, this book, Saigon, Illinois, by Paul Hoover, and I, I love the Vintage Contemporaries uh, imprint. Um, I think they just look cool, but I also have found so many interesting books that I've read uh, from this, this imprint from like the 80s and early 90s. And she's from Chicago, and so this book is uh, set in 1969, where a, a conscious objector during Vietnam goes to Chicago, where he works at a large municipal hospital, and it's just this like very like interesting and strange, you know, sort of 1960s, early 70s book. So I'm, I'm really interested to read this uh, this year. And I'll probably put up a review of that when it's done. Prompt nine, friends don't let friends get older alone. Tag people. A lot of people have torn through this uh, because it's such a delighting tag. So if you haven't yet and you're watching this, jump in. Feel free. It's, it's a very fun set of questions to explore. So thank you, everybody. I'll see you uh, later this week. Hope everybody's